Hi, this is Ben Gonzalez. I'm the Vice President of Business Operations at Premium CBD Labs, which is a third-party testing lab based out of Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm coming to you today to talk to you about the USDA hemp rules. So in October of 2019, the USDA published their interim final rules for hemp. They opened up a comment period and there were many comments. On January 15th of this year, they finally published their final rules on this. And we're not gonna cover everything. It's just not possible in a short video. We are just gonna give you a few key points on this. And one of the biggest ones, which has been the sticking point of this industry for a long time, is the 0.3% rule. Most people know by now, if you don't, you should. The 0.3% rule states that anything that's above 0.3% THC concentration is considered marijuana. Anything below that is hemp. USDA cannot change this. This is codified into law through the Controlled Substances Act, as well as the Agricultural Marketing Act of 1946. That's been amended by the 2014 and 2018 Farm Bills, respectively. It would take an act of Congress to change that. They're also not going to make any ruling about any intermediary compounds or any processed goods or any work in progress hemp extracts or WIPHEs. The USDA states very explicitly that their jurisdiction ends after those plants are harvested. They don't cover anything as far as the processing of hemp. That's the DEA and FDA respectively. They also stated explicitly they are not going to make any ruling about Delta-8 THC as it occurs in such low concentrations in the plant that it's basically just not worth worrying about. What they did clarify explicitly is that they are considering that threshold for total THC. What that means is that they're including the conversion or decarboxylation of THCA into Delta-9 THC for what is considered a total THC concentration for the plant. It's a sting. But to soften it, or at least an attempt to soften it, they've done a few things that are actually quite good for the industry. One of the things the USDA did was expanded the negligence threshold from 0.5% to 1% THC concentration. And for those who don't know what the negligence threshold is, basically if you grow some hot hemp, it's above 0.3% THC, but it's below 1%, they consider it grown in good faith. If you go above that 1% THC, then it's considered negligence. Now, if you get three negligence charges in a span of five years, you can get a license suspension. They also said something interesting is that you can only get one negligence charge per calendar year. Another thing that they did is opened up a couple pathways for remediation. They're not the best, but they are opened up and they could open up more. One of those pathways is to remove the flower from the plant and retest whatever material you have left. Another is to mulch it all together, create biomass. And if that biomass is below 0.3% THC, you can sell it. USDA also extended the harvest window from 15 to 30 days from the point of sampling for your compliance testing. You can harvest prior to getting your sample results back. You just can't enter commerce until you get your results back and shows that you're clear. If you find out that you're above 0.3% THC, you can request a retest of those pre-harvest samples, or you can remediate as mentioned before. If you can't do either one of those and you need to destroy your crop, they're now offering some more reasonable ways of destroying your crop on the field or on the farm without the supervision of law enforcement officers. As long as you take video and photo evidence or both or one or the other along with documentation, you can do it yourself on your farm and send in your documentation showing that you destroyed your crop. Another thing they opened up, which is interesting, is they stated that individual state and tribal plans can include what is considered performance-based sampling. And their big sticking point for this is that they have to have 95% certainty that no more than 1% of the crop from that lot will exceed the 0.3% threshold. But this performance-based sampling gives a wide variety of things that each state or tribal plan can do, including taking into account the plant genetics, the history of the grower, what the final use for the plant is, whether it's just for fiber or human consumption, or whether it's for research. It opens up a wide gamut of things that can help the industry. So another interesting rule that came out of this is about the testing labs whether they're for official compliance purposes or whether they're an informal testing lab and you're just monitoring your crops, they all need to be registered with the DEA. They don't, however, need to have ISO certification. And the USDA said explicitly, they're not gonna provide their own certification program for this. One of the other more interesting bits has to deal with the tribal authorities. 
If you're growing on tribal land, whether you're a member of the tribe or not, you have to follow that tribe's plan. Now, if the tribe doesn't have a plan, you would be growing under the USDA's plan, whether or not the state that you're in has their own plan. This one's really interesting because it gives more authority to the tribes than was originally explicitly stated in the interim rules. There's a lot more to cover on this, much more than we can go through on a short video. If you want to get more in-depth analysis, go to our website, premiumcbdlabs.com slash USDA. There's links to the actual rules as they were published, as well as other information. But ultimately, we'd really love to hear back from you. We want to know how you feel this is going to affect you, your business, the industry in general. Reach out to us. Let us know what you think. In the meantime, there's more rules coming. We'll come back to you with more information as we get it. Thanks for watching.